So about a week ago, I made Solar Cart version four and functionally it's fantastic, but it's very hard to move. It's about 500 pounds with these little wheels. So now we have version five and the wheels are much larger and it's much easier to move around. Now, all of this hardware is not waterproof. It's not outdoor rated, but on version five, everything is outdoor rated. We even have a heated outdoor rated battery and the inverter and all the connections are waterproof. Now the total capacity of the system is 16 kilowatt hours, which is around the same capacity as having three server rack batteries, but it's much easier to wire up because it's only one battery. And I mounted the battery to the frame of the cart with some self-tapping screws. And then I added a 12 KPV. This is a hybrid inverter and it's absolute overkill, but this one is waterproof. The 6000 XP is not. Now the cables that the Ruxu comes with are waterproof and out of the box, they connect to the 12 KPV. And then I added this NEMA 1450 for the AC input so I can charge from the grid very quickly. Now the continuous output of this inverter is 8,000 watts. So I used a smaller NEMA 1450 and this is an adapter so I have some traditional outlets so I can plug in small appliances. But if I remove this, I can charge charge a Tesla with a NEMA 1450 adapter. And we can charge at the maximum rate of the mobile connector, which is pretty cool. But most of the time, I'm just gonna use this one. This is very convenient. You can plug in welders, power tools, or whatever you want. And it can connect to solar, but I'm not doing that for this system. I wanna charge it very quickly with NEMA 1450, and I'll show you how I do that. This one is so much harder to move. These little wheels, I like this thing though. I'm not gonna take it apart, but that thing is so much better. <laughs> so to charge this thing, I take the NEMA 1450 and I plug it in. And I program this thing to charge at 6,000 watts. So it pushes all that power into the battery. And right now we're fully charged. And I charge this system with the new 12,000 XP from EG4, which I really need to review very soon, but so far it's been a champ. And the 12 KPV can output 8,000 watts, but this thing can output 12,000 watts, which means this thing by itself can charge two Teslas with level two charging, which is outstanding. I even had to upgrade the conductor size so that I could charge everything quickly. So I could actually charge the cart and a Tesla at the same time. And right now it's running my bunker. So anyways, let's move on back to the version five cart. Check out how hard it is to move this thing. Just to go up a hill, it's nearly impossible for me. But I can do it. Come on, man. Okay. Woo. Okay, compare that to this. Now this cart is almost the same weight, but look how easy it is to move. Holy cow. Next cool thing is this handle comes off just like that. And you can put this on a tow hitch, just like the one on my golf cart. And now we can tow it anywhere we want. But it always wants to jackknife. It's much easier if you're going forward, but man, backing this little trailer up is difficult. But how cool is that? And the golf cart is waterproof and this is waterproof. So I can just leave this out here and not even think about it. Now the battery in this golf cart is only five kilowatt hours. This thing is 16 kilowatt hours and the nominal voltage is the same. So I could just run two battery cables and charge this battery while I'm driving. So this could be a range extender or I could put a solar panel on top or we could fit a solar panel on the roof of the golf cart, which I haven't done on this one yet. Now the cart I bought from Tractor Supply and it's rated for 1400 pounds, which is plenty for some batteries in an inverter. Let's see if it works. I had the breaker off and we are charging. We're doing 32 amps straight into the Tesla. And this car does 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour. If we multiply it by 16, we get 72 miles. So if I dump this whole battery into the Tesla, we're getting 72 miles. If you had a ground mount array, and you had an EV, this is all you would need to charge. And you can connect a crazy amount of power to that 12 kPV. So this is like a small gas station for an electric car. 
it has everything that you need. Now, one concern that my viewers had in the last video for version four is that the 6000 XP manual states that it shouldn't be mounted upside down. And they're thinking that it will overheat because there's no convective airflow. Well, guess what? This system does not rely on convective airflow. And it's been like that for a long time. Even the LV6548, it would pull air from the top of the unit and push the hot air down. That's against convective airflow. On the 12 kPV, it brings the air from the bottom and out the top. But on the 6000 XP, it comes in from over here and it comes out over here. So if you want the best convective airflow, you're gonna have to mount this thing like this at a 90 degree angle, which would be completely silly. But none of these units are dependent on convective airflow, so you can completely ignore that. Now that night after I made my video, I opened up one of these units and you can see that there's two air channels and then there's a steel a wall that separates the electronics from above from all the terminals down below. Nowhere in this cooling system is there convective airflow. It is pumping it out with these fans. Of course, there's gonna be some convective airflow always, but the performance of this unit is not dependent on its position. The reason that they tell you to mount it right side up is because the screen, you can't flip it upside down. And if you're writing the manual for any of these, you're gonna tell people to put it right side up. That's recommended. But functionally, this will not change anything. I've run this at max output and input, and I charge and discharge this whole battery multiple times already to ensure that I wouldn't get it over temperature. Also, the internal strength of the components and the boards are not compromised when it's upside down either. And I have a whole thread on my forum. If you wanna argue with me about any of the points that I made, you can show me your proof. I'll show you my proof. I showed you the internals. So yeah, please um, discuss it on the forum and I will talk to you there. Now, one thing that could happen is that these holes are more exposed on the top and you can drop things in and cause a short circuit. That's a problem. And this hole is wide open. So yeah, if I drop something down there and it shorts on one of the terminals, I'm gonna have a bad day. Now to ensure that this thing does not overheat, you need to have space on both both sides so that it can breathe. This is the air intake and this is the exhaust. And in the manual, it has a spec for how far you wanna space these inverters apart, especially if you have them in parallel operation. But yeah, I don't think it's a concern at all. And that's pretty much it for this video. This is a dead simple build. You just connect the battery to the inverter you connect an input and output cable, which is very easy to do. Just buy an extension cord for a NEMA 1450, cut it in half, shove it through the hole, strip the wires, and then screw them down. And that's pretty much it. You can't really screw this thing up. If you have a cheaper outdoor rated inverter, please let me know because this thing is complete overkill, but it's the only waterproof inverter that I have. Also, I need to seal these holes. I need to tighten this stuff down. Now I'll have links below for everything I used in the video. Please let me know if you have a better idea for a cart or for anything else. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.